All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, welcome back to the Colt Project. As you can see, we have everything pretty much blued. Um, we did a couple processes off camera, so if you guys are interested in seeing how niter bluing is done, um, I'm sure I can find someone else to take apart and blue for you guys. Um, this was rust blue, the barrel. Um, you can see I put the barrel back on. I torqued it back in place um, and realigned it correctly. Uh, these were rust blued. The side plate over here was rust blued and the cylinder was rust blued. And then for shits and giggles, I decided that I would try niter blowing to see how they turned out. And actually I was very impressed. So this here, uh, everything else basically was niter blued tonight. Um, that's niter blued. Everything looks really good. You can see if I can reflect it for you guys. Um, you can see it kind of takes on a bit of a electric sheen. It's really dark. Um, I think from the bluing salts that I used, uh, they kept everything really dark instead of it getting uh, more electric, which is great. Um, the only thing that I wasn't really happy with is right here. Um, if you guys can see like that, it uh, didn't take the bluing quite as well. Um, I think that's just because of the metal. Everything else looks good. Um, even like back in here, it blued. All of this blued very, very nicely. The nitering was honestly a little bit easier. If I go for another re-blue, um, I'm probably going to do a niter blue next time. Uh, it was very simple. It, you can do that in one whole step instead of uh, doing the rust blue, which the rust blue is going to be a more durable finish in the long run, so this is going to last a lot, a lot better. But um, for parts like some of these that don't get wear, or for these internals that you're never going to see, uh, I think the niter bluing worked perfectly. So what we're going to do is, of course, we're going to put this back together. We have all of our internals. Oh, one more thing. For whatever reason, whatever material, this might be like a high nickel steel or something that this piece is made out of. Uh, for whatever reason, it blew a tiny bit on the sides, but it refused to blue on either surface. Could be surface prep. Um, it could have been that I was holding it, got oils on it, or it could be material base or something like that. For whatever reason, it didn't blue correctly. But again, uh, I believe on a regular revolver, these are all in the white anyways, and they're on the inside. So you're never going to see it. So I'm not too worried. So what we're going to do, we have some tools, a bag of springs and parts, um, a bag of tiny little detents, the little two little balls in the spring that came out of this, I believe, um, the sight screw. So I was lucky enough, you guys saw the first video, if you did see the first video, when I was taking this uh, top sight screw out, uh, the, the spring goes in between in the middle of the screw and then the detent goes on either side, the little balls go on either side and then uh, get screwed down into here. I was lucky that both of the little detent balls fell out and didn't go shooting across the room because as you can see, they are tiny. I would have never found those. I would have had to order a new set. So got lucky there. Otherwise, we have everything we need. We have uh, all of our springs in here. We have our two grip panels. And uh, so we did have a couple issues with the grips. The grips that I ordered are, I believe, aftermarkets, they're uh, remanufacturers. Um, it came with the grip screw and the little nut that seats in here. Uh, I went to go put it on when I first got it, and lo and behold, the screw broke in half right at one of the threads. So I uh, had to order a new one. I probably should talk to the company because this was like eight or nine bucks and tell them that it broke, but it's eight dollars. I didn't want to worry about not having it in time to finish the whole thing. The other thing that we did screw up pretty bad is the little pin that goes in here to hold the, uh, the sight on. It uh, goes in this hole and in that hole across here. Um, I bent it up pretty bad when I was trying to, to tap it out. It is very, very tiny and my, uh, my punches didn't want to fit very well. So we had a little trouble there off camera. So I had to order a new one of those. But I mean, all in all, these parts were maybe $10 plus like four bucks in shipping from um, uh, Gun Parts Corp or Numerich. I think they go by either. So that's good. Uh, something, if you guys happen to be working on a Colt like this, a 357 Trooper, 
Um, this model, uh, just a reminder, is the same as a Python. The frame, everything, except the barrel, is all exactly the same as a Python. So for like this, this part wasn't in stock for the Trooper 357, but they did have it in the Python location. So I just ordered a Python one. Um, it's pretty much the same thing. So if you can't find the parts you need for the 357, um, they're pretty much interchangeable. So if you have this one or if you have a Python and you need parts uh, and they don't have it listed under Python, they might have it listed under Trooper. If they don't have it under Trooper, they might have it under Python. So anyways, we're gonna go ahead and jump cut. Uh, with the uh, magic of editing, we will have a complete gun. So give me, well, what to you is gonna be all of four seconds. To me, is probably gonna be in an hour. So I'll be right back. And back from the jump cut, here is the Krusty Colt. All blued and finished, all put back together. It's now functioning. Cylinder open and closes. Single action, double action, and Honestly, it's kind of a pretty gun. It's, uh, let's say it's got character. It's got a lot of character to it. So you'll see here, there's, uh, you're always gonna have this pitting up in here. This is the good side. This is the pretty side. This is the side I wanna show people because the, uh, the pony is nice and pretty. This part of the barrel actually isn't too ugly. Um, this is the, uh, the Dr. Jekyll side. Uh, here's the Mr. Hyde side. Um, <laughs> you can see it's, it's always gonna have that pitting up in there. Excuse me, but um, you know, for a $200 Colt, it uh, came out really good. We're gonna, I'm gonna take it to the range tomorrow and test fire it and uh, see how it does. Hopefully it doesn't blow up. <laughs> I, don't, I don't anticipate it will, I think it'll be fine. Um, but uh, this is it guys. Thank you for sticking with me through the whole project. Um, it turned out really good. If anybody has any questions on how to do something like this, um, you guys can catch me. We'll obviously leave questions or comments or anything down below, and um, I'm guarantee I'll see them and reply to them. If uh, if you guys want to see, I'm I'm pretty big on Reddit on the gun subreddit. Um, it's patrat21589. I'll leave a link to my account, I guess. So you guys can catch me on there. Uh, most of my my subredditing, most of my redditing in general, is um, guns. So. <laughs> But there we go, guys. So this is what you can do. Take a $200 gun from Ugly. I'll roll in here from Ugly to uh, to this piece of, of fine craftsmanship. Ugly fine craftsmanship, but uh, fine nonetheless. So thanks again, guys. Um, if you got anything to say, let me know. And uh, I will, uh, I'll will i be back. We have another project coming up. A friend of mine just bought a set me parts kit so in the next couple months we're probably going to end up building a set me um that'll be our next video if i don't have anything else before then so if you guys need anything let me know i will uh, be more than happy to answer any questions you guys have so see ya